Good day, my teaching and learning buddies. This is your mentor, your fact check buddy, Ray Gapus, joining you for another teaching and learning session. Now, this time, the question is rather controversial because a lot of parents would not want to use pacifiers and want their babies. However, you know for a fact that newborn babies are still in the oral stage of development. So they have the need to put things in their mouth because they are in the oral phase of development and we need to meet their oral needs in a consistent and satisfying manner because that's the first stage of development and that forms the foundation of their personality in the future. But before we engage and answer the question, let me first begin with a disclaimer and an invitation for you guys to please join me in this mission. Our goal is to provide free NPLEX are an application and review to 100 nurses. We did that last year. We were very, very successful. There were a lot of scholars who were happy and we are changing lives of our fellow nurses, whether it be here in the Philippines or abroad. Remember our system is now being utilized by nurses in more than 30 countries across the different continents in the world, including Africa. So to help us achieve this, just watch and finish the ads in our videos. I beg you to do that. That's the only thing that you have to do in order for you to help us in this mission. Thank you so much in advance for doing so. So back to our question. Can the use of a pacifier increase the risk for sudden infant death syndrome or seeds or creep death? Now, to give you a categorical answer, we reviewed literatures and more literature claim that when a child sucks on the pacifier, it actually requires them to push the tongue forward. We know for a, we know for a fact that newborns okay, or infants have proportionately larger tongue in relation to the oral cavity when compared to adults, which simply means that infants or newborns are at higher risk for airway obstruction, especially when the tongue falls backwards. Since sucking on the pacifier would require the newborn to push the tongue forward as they suck, therefore, sucking on the pacifier will not increase the risk for seeds. Actually, it decreases the risk for sudden infant death syndrome because it prevents airway obstruction. Because as they suck on the pacifier, they move the tongue forward, preventing airway obstruction. That's the categorical answer. So a pacifier might help reduce the risk for sudden infant death syndrome or seeds or crib death. That's our first functional concept. Now, according to the American Academy of Pediatrics, pacifiers are beneficial in the first six months of life and weaning should occur after first six months. So in the second six months of the first year of life, there is an increased risk for otitis media, especially if the babies are being given pacifiers in a uh, baby care center, which simply means there could be a potential of transfer of pathogens from one baby to another. So it's very important also to note that if the pacifier is given after the, babies, uh, the baby is sucking on milk through a feeding bottle, it could potentially result from the residual milk in the mouth as the baby sucks on the pacifier is pushed backwards and it could potentially, because of the continuous pressure, it could potentially go into the ears and may lead to chronic otitis media. Therefore, it's not also wise to use your pacifier, especially on the second six months of life. But in order to meet the needs of the child, specifically in the first six months of life, the pacifier is more beneficial, okay? So do we recommend therefore the use of pacifier in the first six months of life? Yes, because it helps meet the child's 
oral needs. Now let's talk about sudden infant death syndrome or crib death. Now there have been theories in the past that relates your sudden infant death syndrome to prolonged QT syndrome, which is related to hypocalcemia. However, recent literature suggests that sudden infant death syndrome or crib death is due to unknown causes. However, there are common risk factors that have been identified, including brain defects, low birth weight, and the presence of respiratory infection, which could potentially um, increase the risk for the baby to um, have their airways blocked. Okay, so let's move on. The following may increase the risk for sudden infant death syndrome. This is our second functional, third functional concept. So sleeping on the belly. So it's not wise to have the baby sleep on the belly. You always have to have them positioned on their back, never on their belly. And it's not also wise to have fluffy pillows or stuffed toys around the baby. Even positioners should not be around the baby. They should be placed on a firm mattress. That's all they need. Okay, then sleeping on a soft mattress could also increase the risk, okay, of sudden infant death syndrome. It should be firm mattress. Sharing bed with parents. Now, let me just highlight this thing. If the baby is sleeping in the same room as that of the parents, that's all right for as long as they are in the crib. However, if the baby is sleeping and sharing bed with parents, siblings, or even a pet, that increases the risk for sudden infant death syndrome because they may suffocate any time when their nose is usually positioned um, side by side with that of the parents or the siblings or the pet, okay? Next, overheating the room. So a very warm environment could be a risk factor for sudden infant death syndrome. Now let's try answering a simple question. Which of the following can help prevent crib death in a baby? The keyword prevention can help prevent crib death in a baby. One, sharing room with parents, yes, but they should not be sleeping in the same bed, on the same bed, okay? Lying on the back, yes, that will help prevent crib death. Using a pacifier, we talk about this, yes. Avoiding the use of small pillows, yes. Even positioners should not be used and floppy toys or stuffed toys should not be used. It should not be around the crib of the baby, okay? Even those pillows that you, a place in order to you know protect the baby from um, injury as they move that you place around the crib it's a big no-no and then avoiding the use of small pillows yes using firm sleep surface yes okay this will help then sleeping with the parents in the same bed no this could potentially increase the risk for sudden infant death syndrome or crib death okay so with that, I just hope you learned something new and you got clarified on the use of your pacifier as it relates to the incidence of sudden infant death syndrome in newborn babies. So let's learn together. If you have any topics which you may want me to cover in my future videos, send in your requests. All of these topics are coming from our students who are asking me a lot of things about the things that they met when they took their exams. So therefore, send me an email through mentor.raygapos at gmail.com and like to congratulate. I don't um, put shout out messages anymore because it lengthens the video. And we have been flooded with our pastors from all over the world. So it's not wise to have just one picture for each of the videos and one shout out message. That will take eternity. You wouldn't want me to be just giving shout out messages to our passers. You would want content in our video. And that's what we're giving you today. So my congratulations to all our passers. You know who you are. I know you've done your part. Thank you very much for acknowledging the preparations that we help you with. So thank you so much from the team of Gapos Mentors. Okay, so this is your mentor, your fact check buddy saying a functional concept a day keeps your NCLEX RN fears away. So if you love this video, please don't forget to subscribe, share, and hit the like and bell buttons so that you'll get notified when we upload a new video. And we do that every week. Share this to 10 of your friends. You'll receive more guide and prayers from our group so that you're going to pass the NCLEX with a minimum of 75. And who knows, maybe in just 30 minutes of taking the test. Good luck and God bless.
Take care.